Oh no worky worky lady lady tonight folks. Uh, it's picked the kids up as usual at 3 o'clock. So I'm going to continue to work on these for the duration of the day. For the duration of the freaking day. So as soon as I've got this purge set up all ready to go, I'm going to actually weld up all of the 90 degree elbows that I've got and they will be then ready to uh, to use when we finally get all the vessels done. You know, multiple birds with one stone, I've gone to the trouble of setting this little fella up so I may as well utilise it and it's quite easy to just run around here with the pulse setting and uh, get it wetted in on both sides. Looks really smart. Yesterday I had the amps up to set 65 I think. I'm going to try 75 or 80 with the pulse this time because I still wasn't getting that full penetration on the second weld. Come into the light. On the first one that we did, <clears throat> excuse me, it actually did penetrate quite well right into the base, right into the uh, the base of the weld in the, can you see it? Can you sound it? But on this side, we were just a little bit short. We've got some penetration there. A little bit, a little bit. We're only five or ten amps off. So we'll boost it up again a little bit more and give it another whirl. It's all trial and error for this kind of stuff, but it's putting a nice finish on the outside and I'd like to have full penetration seeing as I'm going to the trouble of purging. Full penetration. Another fitting on there, tacked up, welded up, ready to go. spent almost half an hour cutting this circle out of this pressed blank. Firstly I cut it on the plasma cutter which was very quick, made short work of it. Then I had to wear it down a little bit with the Dremel so it fits. But the abrasive wheels that I've got for the Dremel are crap so I've ordered some tungsten carbide burrs and hopefully they will speed this kind of thing up but I just wanted to test the concept of a racking arm. So this is obviously the port for taking off the beer from that fermenter. And it's really quite high and you can see at the bottom there's probably 40 or 50, maybe even 60 litres below the level of this port. So the idea is that we have this press blank on there, about there, 
And then we have a handle here to rotate. You see what I'm doing? Makes sense now this is on there. And then the outlet on this end, which we can use to siphon off the beer, because you'll be below the level, of course. And then what we do is we simply send that into the tank, fix it up to there, and then inside the tank we're rotating that racking arm and we can chase the beer all the way down to the outlet if, there's, if it's sediment free. This stops pretty much 50 to 100 mil off the bottom of that uh, concentric reducer on the base of the cone. So all I have to do is line up how far in this needs to go to be in the position and then we'll weld we'll weld that fitting on and then we'll weld a handle on and then we'll weld a one inch liner on and then we can put the outlet on there and that will be pretty much complete then very very close to having a working concept here it's half past two folks uh, I've done a fair bit of work this morning and to say what I've produced I'm extremely proud of is an understatement so this is the racking arm that I've made and I'm really I'm really quite bloody proud of it so I shall show you how it works on on the fermenter so basically as you can see this handle points in the same direction as the racking arm so we know exactly where it is if we're going to turn and rotate we can see on the inside which direction the racking arm is pointing in so we slide it on and we engage the main nut and then we would put on our one inch takeoff valve and that is how the front of the fermenter is going to look and we can see she's set in the downward position now I imagine you'd set her in the downward position to uh, during fermentation so the yeast doesn't settle into the spout and then while this is all still fastened you just crack that ever so slightly and you can rotate maybe only losing one or two droplets of beer and then we can see that the racking arm is now in the sideway position so if the sediment level was there we'd be able to rack off all the clear beer down to the sediment level but while you have the valve open and you are draining, you're draining beer out and you're filling casks you'd start filling casks your first one anyway up here like this and then whilst you or somebody else watches the other end of the hose you slowly rotate this around until someone says well that's the sediment and you just back off tighten it down and you can totally empty your tank I'm really I must say I'm really bloody proud of it so uh, let's take you up top and I'll give you a shot of it on the inside of the tank so if we climb up here and we throw you over the top there you can see we've got it on a 45 degree angle out to the side and that would be pulling sediment from the edge of the tank there really quite a cool little contraption apart from the fact that I don't actually have a glycol cooling system or a lid for this tank or it's insulated I think I could practically put some beer in it now there we go check her out so we've got our takeoff valve here which we've just had a good look at we've got the bottom drain valve there everything has got gaskets on and everything is pretty much ready to be leak tested on this bad boy I am really chuffed folks really chuffed right I've got five or ten minutes to have a quick tidy up round here then I've got to shoot off and collect the children from school same old same old hey buddy 
Hey. Welcome home from school. Hey camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to end the vlog here and we'll see everybody tomorrow and I'm going to take you to to McDonald's because you've not been for ages. Okay. But you have to come shopping with me because I need a new coat. Where are you going? To the coat shop. Okay. So, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.